So now for the finishing touches on our Silverado. We're gonna put the door moldings on first. We're gonna use a, some masking tape as a guide so we get them on straight and level. We measured it off the other side. Now because we live in Illinois and it's nice and cold here, we gotta heat up the door to get the moldings to stick. Put the molding up on top of the heat lamp to soften it up a little bit. Peel the backing off the two-sided tape. Line it up with the bottom of our tape. Press it on, make sure it's on there good. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the back door. I labeled them so I knew which was which, so now I'm just peeling off the masking tape. Peeling off the backings for the two-sided tape. Line it up one end. Pushing it all on. Taking off our labels. Take off our guideline. Now we're gonna put the name plates on. These things are expensive, so I just reuse them. It takes a little time to do it this way, but better than the 70 bucks it costs for this stupid nameplate. I measured it all off the other side. Now we got the door labels. And those screws are really bothering me, so we're gonna touch them up a little bit. Even though the bolts on the other side lined up, we still had some paint broken loose, so we touched those up too. Now we're gonna put the Z71 sticker on, a little wax and grease remover, a little tack cloth to get some dust off. Now we're gonna spray it down with water and a drop of dish soap. Peel the backing off the sticker. Set it up there about where it goes. Kind of move it around and adjust it where we want it. Now we're gonna push all the air out of it. Start in the center and work your way out to the edges every direction. Now I just peel the cover off of it. If you peel it at a sharp angle, it'll keep it from lifting the sticker off the truck. Wipe down all the extra water. Okay, so just when you think you're done, you run into little problems. And my little problem is that little X through the GPS. So here's our fix. I took it out of the parts truck. We're gonna plug it in. I have the overhead console down so I can get right to this plug. I'm gonna plug this in and see if we get our GPS back. Here we go. Problem solved. Now I just gotta actually mount the antenna back in the roof. Either weasel my hand up there or pull the headliner down a little bit. And just so you know what I'm talking about, there's our overhead console hole. And I just fish the wire out. This actually goes over here. So I can probably get my hand in here and get it down. We're gonna try that first. So like I said, we'll drop the headliner down so we can get to that and change it. I tried, but there were just too many little screws to hold that in. Actually little pieces, it just kept falling everywhere, so I gave up and just pulled the headliner down.
I'm gonna put the overhead console in, plug it in. Snap it up in there. Now I'll put the two screws in it to hold it in. Cover back up. We're gonna change the wiper blades for the safety test. You don't want to let those hit the windshield with any force. They will crack the brand new windshield. So when you're changing these, pull the blades off, set them down gently, and then put the new blade on. Now we're going to put some fluid film in the rockers. This is the first time I've ever used this product. I usually use different kinds of cavity wax, but everyone's been talking about it, so I thought I'd give it a try. There's a link in the description below uh, if you want to pick some up. It goes on nice. I don't know exactly how long it'll last. I've heard good things about it, but we'll find out. The other cavity wax on my other trucks been on there for, even on my plow truck, for 10 years. And the rockers aren't rotted out. And yes, it's a GM. So it must be doing something. I love a video that explains how to do this in depth. Now we're going to pull our plugs back in. Now we're going to do the bed and the fenders. Make sure you get the wheel arches real good. That's where they like to rust. Now we're going to do our maintenance. Throw our gear lube in, our filters, trans filter, fuel filter, and oil filter. And then we'll put oil in. There's our trans filter. Yes, I did change it. I said I was going to. Pull the magnet down and wipe it off. Make sure there's nothing on there. Put our new filter on. Now we're going to drain the oil. It's more like an oil flush. This oil has only been in there for about 20 miles. Now let the truck down. I'm too short to reach the filter. Tighten oil plug up. So the state came out and re-tagged our used cab with the VIN number from the original mistake truck. So now the VIN number matches the engine, the paperwork, all the computers, and the cab. The frame, VIN number, and a couple other hidden VIN numbers, trans, transfer case, will all be documented in the salvage inspection test, which comes next. But I had to get the windshield in it and get the safety test done, which I did, so that I can get my salvage inspection date. And that's usually about a four to six week wait. I have had it as long as four months, but for the first time I was able to get this inspection in only four days. I didn't even have the truck ready. So it was kind of a rush to get it done over the weekend so that I could have it ready for his test on Monday. It gave me some motivation to really get moving on this truck, so it's all done. Now I'm just waiting to get the title back. So I'll put a few miles on it, and when the title comes back, We'll see if the new buyer has any money. If they do, truck's gone. If they don't, I have a truck. So now that we answered the VIN number and the cowl question, I'm gonna answer another question that I get from you guys a lot. And that's, what do I do with the information labels on the pillars or the doors or even the whole cab when I change it? Where do I get the replacements from? And for that, my answer is, I call it these guys. It's ECS Automotive Concepts or ecsvin.com. Don't worry, I'll put a link in the description box below because who likes to type these days? But what these guys do is they make the OEM reproduction labels for the collision repair industry. Pretty much any of your big shops nationwide are calling these guys. They're the only company licensed by manufacturers like GM, Ford, Chrysler, and a bunch of others to make these exact OEM replacements. And they don't just make the labels that go in here, they also make the underhood labels, anti-theft labels that go on your doors and your hoods, trunks, quarter panels. They make the service parts identification labels or your RPO codes for GMs uh, that go in your glove box or on your spare tire cover or in your trunk. Pretty much if there's a label and you can take a picture of it, they could probably make it for you. And coincidentally, 
that pretty much is the entire process. You take a picture, you email it to them along with all your information, give them a call, they'll set everything up, and in two to three days, you get your new labels. Just peel and stick. Couldn't be easier. I've used these guys for a few years now, and their customer service has always been fantastic. And their product is the best on the market. They don't just look like the OEM labels, you can't tell the difference. Which is important, especially to people like me, because you know on this channel, we like to make it as good as pre-accident condition or better, or even as good as new. I'd like to thank ECS Automotive Concepts for sponsoring this video and helping me get this truck back to as good as new. So since we're answering questions today, on to the next one. What was the parasitic draw? There's your answer. It was just the brake lights. The brake light switch needs to be recalibrated, so the brake lights were staying on. I didn't know it at the time because, well, there was no bed. So I'm kind of glad I waited because as soon as I plugged them in and turned the key on, the brake lights were on. It was pretty obvious. I should have known the third brake light, except for the fact that the bulb happened to be burned out. So it was enough to keep the relays on and keep the BCM and ECM from going to sleep. In addition to that, the truck also thinks you're getting in it to start it and to keep cycling the glow plugs, which takes a lot of voltage and kills a battery pretty quick. It's just a matter of recalibrating the brake pedal and our problem is solved. So now to answer our next question. Why don't I take the dealer name off the back of the truck? And normally I do. Free advertising annoys me. But this one's a little different. Bobby Lehman Chevrolet no longer exists. It's now Mark Wahlberg Chevrolet. As in, Mark Wahlberg the actor. And I did know that Mark Wahlberg bought a Chevy dealership. I just didn't know it happened to be this one. But thanks to you guys on YouTube, I do now. Since I'm such a fan of Mark Wahlberg's, I was wondering if he'd want to put his name on the back of the truck. So if any of you know Mark Wahlberg or follow him on Instagram, send him this video. See if we can make it happen. I'd love an excuse to drive down to Columbus, Ohio, meet Mark Wahlberg, and make a video for you guys. So Mark, if you're out there and you want some free advertising and to make my day, give me a call. All right, let's go for a ride. So now let's answer some more questions while you guys are a captive audience in the back seat. Everyone wants to know how much time I have in this truck. I have a total of 78 hours in this build. This includes dismantling two and a third trucks and putting one back together. The easiest way to break it down is by video. So in the first video, all I really did was introduce the truck, but I did pull the torque converter bolts and the front bumper off. So that's about an hour's worth of time there. In part two, I did a little work on the parts trucks to get it started and make it drivable. I had less than an hour on that, but we'll call it an hour and round up. In part three, we pulled the cab, front end, and bed off the mistake. Well, at least we unbolted the bed. I unbolted the seats before the video, and all that was about four hours. In part four, we pulled the engine and trans out of our bare frame and installed our new rear cover, oil pan, and anything else we could before we pulled our parts truck apart. That took three hours. In part five, we stripped our new cab and swapped everything we could at the time from the mistake. I also transferred the wiring harnesses to the new headliner and changed the seatbelt colors. Those videos will be in a tutorial series eventually. All of that took 10 hours. In part six, we pulled in the parts truck and stripped it down transferred all the parts we needed to put our dash in our cab and to put the engine from the mistake back together with its new trans and transfer case. All that took 14 hours. In part seven, we dropped the drivetrain into the new frame, dropped our cab down on the new frame, put our front end and doors on, and installed the remainder of the interior. That was 16 hours. In part eight, we did some diagnosing and replaced the ECM, engine harness, and a few modules. Did some more diagnosing, changed some more bad parts, and installed the airbag. All this was five hours. We changed our bedside in part nine and stripped down the frame from the old truck. That took six hours. In part 10, we swapped the original rear end back into the new truck, and this took two hours. Part 11, we put everything back together after paint and installed the bed. This was six hours. Part 12, we did all the maintenance finishing touches, rust proofing, and making it better than it was before the accident. This took five hours. 
The stuff you don't see in the videos, stuff like searching for parts, inspections, paperwork, and little stuff like that, adds up to about five hours. So if my math is correct, that's 78 hours. The body and paint guys had close to 18 hours in it for a total of 96 hours into this build. I did not figure any of the transport time into the trucks because that was paid for separately. And I'll explain how that works in future tutorial videos. So as you can hear, whenever you put the window down, it made a clicking noise. Somebody's been here before. There was some broken glass I found when I took the interior out, so I figured the window might have been broken at one time. And after pulling the door panel off, I found out I was right. There was all kinds of glass in the bottom of the door. The noise was actually the window regulator. They have two bolts that go in the bottom that hold the window on and only one was bolted in the other one was on the outside of the window so when it went down it caught, caught on the door intrusion beam so we just put it back the way it was supposed to be and now we're gonna vacuum out all the glass pull out the speaker so we can get to the rest of it And while we're here, we're gonna put our cavity wax in there. Put our water barrier back up. Grab handle bracket back on. Put our speaker back in. Plug in the switches on the door panels. Plug in the door handle. Clip our door panel in. Put all our screws back in. Put our covers back on. One more screw at the bottom. Now we're going to check our window. Apparently the last guy didn't. This is all it takes. Check your work. Even if you've done it a million times. We all make mistakes. Now, we couldn't rust proof all the other doors and leave this one. So, pulled the door panel off and now we're gonna put our wax in this door. Now we're gonna put it all back together. You guys should be an expert at putting these doors together by now. I know I am. Put all our screws back in. covers back on.
Check our door handle and our door lock. More answers coming up, but first let's enjoy the sound of victory as we listen to this diesel idol. Okay, so what's what here? The complete front end, hood, core support, cooling, and front bumper came from the parts truck. The driver door, frame, trans, transfer case, wheels, and steering column also came from the parts truck. The passenger airbag, engine harness, heater box, and pedals came from the parts truck. And these were all stuff I didn't plan on when I originally bought this build. And why the parts truck really saved me on this one, because all that stuff would have really added up. The curtain airbags, the cab, the headliner, the dash, the front seat belts, and rear bumper were all used parts purchased from salvage yards. The bedside, the decals, the labels, the lower front valance and bracket, fluids, filters, and the driver's door sill plate are all brand new parts. So what's original then? Well, the most important part, the title. The title says that it is the original mistake truck. And the engine, that's also kind of important. That's also from the original truck. There are a few other parts too. All the wiring in the cab, the modules, the seats, all the trim, three doors, the bed minus the bedside, and the rear end. So call it what you want. You can say it's not the same truck, but I have the paperwork that says you're wrong. You can build a vehicle around the title, and there's a proper way to, and legal way to do it. And this is how it's done. If you're not afraid of a little work, and you have patience, you can make money as well. So to everybody that commented that this truck was going to rattle and squeak because I had the interior out of it, I don't know what you guys are doing wrong on your builds, but this thing is quiet as a mouse. Uh oh, maybe I spoke a little too soon. Where's that noise coming from? I hear it somewhere. The noise coming from this console here. Ah, oh, there it is. All the money I made on this build. Win some, lose some. Oh, oh wait, there, there's more. Quite a stack. Oh wait, there's still a few more. So to all the haters out there that said I was wasting my time and couldn't make any money, this represents what I made on this truck, building it instead of buying it. Yeah, it was a lot of work, but if you do it right, you can make some money. So if you want to see where this money goes, subscribe to the channel because you will see it here. I'm actually going to spend it right now. So give the video a big like, unless you were one of the haters that said I wasn't going to make any money, then give it a dislike. Share it if you think somebody else might like it. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next build. So I got a little deal for you guys. Everybody always wants to know what I make on these builds. And I usually don't share those numbers because buyers do see my video and it complicates the sale. And that's where I actually make my money on these builds. But I will be willing to complicate my sale under one condition. If this whole Mark Wahlberg meeting thing happens and he personally puts his dealer name on the back of my truck and we make a video about it, I will share all the numbers on this truck in that video. What I bought it for, what I put into it, and what I sold it for. So if you guys want to see all the numbers, let's make this Mark Wahlberg meeting happen. Ball's in your court. Where's that sound coming from? Oh, that's what I did with all this extra bolts. Problem solved. Now I go pick that up. Don't worry.
they're not really the extra bolts unless I'm putting shelving in the back of my truck. 